Hi folks, good morning. I'm John Stock. I run the U.S. Geological Survey's National Innovation Center. I'd like to spend a little time with you today talking about a new class of uh, uncrewed aerial vehicles called HAIL. Uh, that stands for High Altitude Long Endurance. And the craft that you can see on the page uh, to, uh, just to the left of me represent some of the emerging uh, new class of this vehicle that uh, NASA, USGS, and other federal agencies are excited to be partnering with. The top you see the Airbus, um, uh, below that is HAPS Mobile's Hawk 30, um, then below that an airship from Sky, uh, another fixed wing from Prismatic, and then one from Swift. Um, these represent a variety of different payload capacities, but the common denominator is that they're all intended to be in the stratosphere for days to weeks, and perhaps in some cases for months. And that's exciting because it gives us opportunities to do new things. Let me tell you about some of those new things. Um, for the first time, uh, these craft, which you see again uh, with their payloads on the bottom here, um, offer us the ability of staring at the land surface at meter scale resolution for days and weeks. Um, and in addition, they can stay in the stratosphere and continuously sample in situ. So they'll be able to measure um, the geology and biology aloft the things that are flowing through the nation's airways. Uh, the um, capability that probably makes the strongest business case for these kind of platforms is that sitting there in the stratosphere, they'll have the ability to provide a communication uplink that's visible across the landscape. And in the graphic just above me, you see uh, a notional 200 nautical mile radius of communications that any one of these platforms can provide. That might be 5G, it might be low power wide area networks like LoRa. Um, there are a variety of different ways these platforms can be used to connect. So what I'll do in the next couple of slides is talk about what some of the new science we can do is, and I've categorized it as mapping in time, which is essentially this stair capability uh, that is fundamentally new at this resolution, mapping in space, um, because these things can also move across the stratosphere and map the earth underneath. Um, and then the notion that um, there are things like low, uh, low power wide area communications um, that these things could host as a hub. So let's look at some of the science. Um, let's say you have a thermal sensor and you have the ability to train that thermal sensor for a long period of time, maybe it's a day, maybe it's a week, on a patch of ground. You're going to be able to uh, measure how the ground, uh, each element on the ground changes its temperature through time. And from that you can make a map of thermal inertia, which is strongly dominated by bulk density and other material properties. And so we likely will be able to make new maps of Earth's surface that tell us where critical minerals are, where water is, um, and perhaps where hazards are. Um, uh, on a similar theme, just next door is this notion that we can use the same technologies to look at evapotranspiration. Um, and that means that we might be able to measure agricultural fields from remotely in such a way that we can um, you know, improve precision agriculture, uh, improve your ability to know when you need to water it and how much. By the same token, uh, specialized thermal sensors um, that Forest Service and others are developing um, can be used to image wildfire in real time so you know exactly where the fire line is. And the same kinds of thermal sensors can be used on streams and rivers uh, to look at surface velocity if there are thermal packets visible from that altitude. So a variety of different um, potentials. Uh, below you see we can do the same thing for landslides, glaciers, and rivers using optical particle image velocimetry. That's where you track a particular uh, pixel that you, has unique identifiers and, and by doing so you get velocity. Um, in terms of uh, improving the nation's situation awareness, having one of these aircraft with uh, something like a low power wide area network hub like LoRa means that we could potentially improve our ability to track wildlife as well as uh, track hazards. So on the lower left, you see a next generation wildlife tracker from a USGS partnership with NASA. This is new NASA technology uh, being used to uh, reduce the weight, size, weight, and power of wildlife trackers. Uh, on the upper right, you see a next generation um, uh, non-contact stream gauge. This is a partnership between USGS and Carnegie Mellon. And so these are low cost, inexpensive instruments that um, we could essentially put across the landscape um, and then connect to this uh, uh, tower in the sky. Take a moment to talk about how there are some events like volcanic eruptions where one can imagine um, having a high altitude long endurance craft that would have a variety of different sensors that would tell you both about the hazards and the evolving volcanic eruption, uh, everything from ash clouds um, to lava flows. Um, and so you can imagine the same thing with uh, earthquakes. 
um, for nearshore pollution and plumes. This is the kind of platform that you could essentially track them in real time. Here you see some examples from Hawaii uh, where terrestrial runoff is polluting blue waters and that degrades both uh, coral reefs and over the long term, uh, the cultural assets that make Hawaii a place that people want to go uh, as tourists. Um, daily and weekly mapping, um, thermal imagers could be used to map the distribution of temperatures in streams. So we have a, a, a heads up on oncoming ecosystem drought and also um, uh, uh, stream temperatures that impact um, fishery value like salmonids. Um, the hyperspectral sensors that are being developed um, at NASA and by private industry allow us to do ecosystem mapping at a level we might be able to alert for invasive species uh, the map on the right there is the strawberry guava, which is one of the invasive species in Hawaii. And it's the kind of platform that would allow us to have weekly uh, or monthly situational alerts on where strawberry guava is. Um, we can also use uh, a technique called interferometric synthetic aperture radar, or INSAR for short, uh, to measure very precisely changes in Earth's surface that come from subsidence, earthquakes, landslides, and volcanic deformation. Um, so I've briefly taken us through a number of exciting use cases. Um, uh, one of the platforms, SWIFT, will be flying, funded by the United States Forest Service um, under a NASA SBR, and USGS is hoping to participate that with the hyperspectral sensor. Um, and then uh, USGS has just signed a cooperative research and development agreement with Sky, the airship vendor, um, to fly potentially both LIDAR um, as well as hyperspectral. So that's a brief look into the future, and thank you guys for spending some time with me.